My name is Rhapsody, welcome back to Monster Train. I'm going to be playing the Awoken in this episode with the Allied Clan of the Hellhorned because it's my only option to have as my Allied Clan there. Uh, I've won once as a sentient, apparently. <laughs> I don't remember that. Oh, right, it was the Sting build. Okay, yeah, I'm going to leave the Covenant on. I feel like I'm about to regret that decision, though. Wildwood Sap and Spreading Spores. Oh my god, this is a regen deck baby. Uh, March of Shields as well. Move a unit to the front and apply to armor. So that's strictly anti-synergistic with regen because regen won't trigger or it won't have health to restore if we've armored up the unit anyway. Um, let's look at the artifact first, I think. Start a battle. Summon a random unit from your deck on each floor. That can be really good. Apply days to enemy units whenever they enter the room below the pyre room. That prevent them from attacking. That's not that powerful. Sketches of Salvation can be pretty good. I just need to remove my train stewards very early and start getting big units. Big units with regen? Yeah, let's try and let's try and do that. Upgrade the champion to revenge draw one. I mean, that's a bigger health pool. Rejuvenate deal 10 damage to the front enemy unit. I mean. It, with re regen, that would happen, what, uh, at the end of turn? I... Hmm. Nah. I'll take it. I don't really think my champion is going to be, like, core to my strategy in this run, though. At the start of battle, enemy units appear on each floor. Well, I mean, I have... <laughs> I have units on each floor as well. Got him. So I'm going to lose the bottom two here. Right? I can march of shields you, I guess. So I'm thinking, Sentient in the top line, give you a restore. Give you regen at the end of the turn as well. And if I march of shields my train steward, it lives. But I mean, I could also march of shields my sen uh, Sentient here. Keep it on full HP at the end of the turn. Actually, no, I'll just torch the back a little. So we're going to be entirely focused on doing the top floor for this whole fight. That's okay, though. Shouldn't be too bad. Because by the time the enemies get to the top floor, I'll be pretty stacked. And also, they'll be pretty low because they enter with rage too, so that's why they have damage. But every time they ascend, they lose a stack of it. Okay. Um... Torch for that. I'd love the extra 50. Go for a spreading. Spore there for some more regen. More regen again. And now that it has thorns, it just kills them all easily. And regens itself back up. Yeah, so this was super safe to do. I figured it would be. Very glad to get that much early money as well. March there. It's not restore, just the instantaneous kill. What I really need is some torches to kill down those frontliners first. I'll torch one of them, but I want spreading spores again for the extra thorns. Pause, restore to kill the frontliner, and then... Ooh. Regen is so good against the boss because each time we go through a round of combat, I'm regening. Right. Apply spikes four. And spikes on friendly units deal plus two damage per stack. Let's 
But Spike Channel and being in the deck is bad because of the sketches of salvation, though. I'm going to take Pyre Shards. Honestly, Molting Imp and Pyre Chomper are also bad because of the sketches of salvation. Reinforce not that great either because I don't tend to go with the armor build. I really want a better stuff there. So over here, I can get a Hellhorn unit and then enhance it. Awoken unit, enhance spells. Enhancing spells is pretty good. I'm going to see if I can... What big Awoken unit can I get? Perfect. Rejuvenate, gain one spikes. Increase your max HP by 30. That's on summon, so it's triggered when played. Ooh. So you say summon a random unit from... Okay, so the Thorn Tolo should trigger its effect. Thorn Tolo is perfect here. Uh, upgrade a card to remove consume. Remove consume on a regen card is pretty ridiculous. Let's remove consume on... Ooh, Pyre Shards? No, it's, it's Wildwood Sap. Definitely. And then lower the cost of the Spreading Spores because add two copies of this card to your discard pile and this card itself. Uh, let's remove a Train Steward because if we remove a Train Steward now, we're guaranteed to get a Thorn Tollow out at the start of each fight. And then I just start stacking stuff on top of it. Non-boss enemy units gain plus four attack. I think I can live. I think I can live with that. Hopefully I don't get my big unit on the bottom floor this turn though. Actually, uh, I'm sentient there. Torch the backliner. I'm going to give you armor because you still have the health under it to heal. You can trigger rejuvenate while uh, unit does on full health anyway, though. It's not like that's the be all end all there. I think I may actually be building up the, the Sentient here instead. Instead of the Thorn Tolo. Yeah. Let's go Restore. Restore kills the Frontliner, then Spreading Spores. Set up Regen and more Spikes. It's just too impactful to do it on the bottom floor. Okay. All good. And final boss goes down easy. Yeah, that much regen constantly triggering. Yeah. Maybe we don't go for a Thorn Dollar build. Maybe it's actually back to the Sentient and Regen build. It's good against the boss because it triggers multiple times in the fight. It's just not good against the normal floor is the problem. Engraft is really good uh, in a Rejuvenate deck because it restores a health, draws a card, and gains an energy. So it replaces itself, but it restores a health, so it triggers a Rejuvenate. None of those. Steelworker, maybe. You to go behind a train, in front of a train student. No. Horned Warrior, maybe? Horned Warrior could just go behind the Thorned Hollow. Big hitter. Just takes chunky hits. Yeah, get me a chunky hitter. Yeah, give me some of the, give me, give me, give me some of that. That chunky hit. Duplicate a card that's not my champion and get another copy of Wildwood Sap. Sounds good to me. Spreading spores as well, though. Let's look at the Hellvent event first. 
Hey, how's it going, half the blacksmith? Half the blacksmith huddles near the train. She's clearly unaccustomed to the cold. I trust the rail has been smooth. Well, as smooth as it can be in times like this. Uh, right, well, I found something of use. A couple of relics left behind by my father. I, I wasn't sure you'd come by the forge, so I trekked out to this damn cold to find you. I don't have room for both, but I figured you may have need for one. Hell, I might even be able to upgrade it later if it suits you. So do you want one of these? Okay. Take the rail spikes or the rail driver. The rail spike is deal X damage. Slay, add a copy of this card to your discard pile. It is important to know. A copy of the card to your discard pile in terms of the automatic spikes does give you more copies of automatic spikes. So the text of this says add two copies of this card to your discard pile. This says add a copy of this card to your discard pile. However, this adds another copy to our main deck. There's also the rail driver here, which is extinguish. Add a copy of this card to your discard pile. Uh, it, it also generates. So I happen to know the effects of each of these. The rail spikes, if you upgrade them, and you upgrade them by having four or more in your deck at any point, then after that combat, you will have a, another encounter with Hef. Um, and the rail spikes will deal 10 extra damage. So they just become zero, zero energy deal 10 damage effects. And then take the rail driver is spike drive colony. These get plus 20 attack, I believe. So they become 22s. The only problem is spike drive colony. I'm not going to want them summoned out by the sketches of salvation. So I'll take the rail spike. Honestly, if it wasn't new, I probably would have avoided the rail spike there. But it's new. So we'll look at it. Hef gives a nod of approval and she hands off the rail spike. Careful with that. It looks ancient, but my old man made it to work for a good while. And if you can get a few more of them, uh, four of what it'll do, I'll make it worth your while. Thank you, Hef. Yeah, let's look at the Awoken unit. Probably none of these. Closest would be the Awoken Hollow, but no. It might be more spreading spores. Yeah. yeah, I think it is. Enemies will enter this fight with damage shield. That's annoying. Really annoying, in fact. Let's go Thorn Hollow on the top floor. Sentient on this one. My train steward on the bottom floor is effectively forfeit right now. Let's get some spikes and then burn one of the damage shields off. You need the regen. I'm gonna go restore and march of shields there. Regen on the top line, it just means, you know, spikes every turn, basically. The rail spikes are really good against the constructed explosives because you can kill them with you know, only one energy. So this is actually the floor I'm going to stop the boss on. This is kind of just a, a stopgap for right now. So let's get all of those out there. I'll throw a hit against the frontliner here. And then spike the... Actually, you do four, but you die and only deal five. But then this goes to the next floor and deals another four to my next target. 
So I can save 4 HP on the next floor by taking one extra HP worth of damage here by using the rail spike there. Definitely regen, engraft, spreading spikes, spreading spikes. Torch on one of them, just setting up for a later turn. So that thorned hollow, I need to give it a bunch of extra HP. That's one of the most important things I can really do here. Restore you twice. And then rail spikes to kill the bomb. Actually, you heal back up anyway. I could kill the clergyman. Fine. So now I have three of those in the discard pile. And I have one in my draw. So I'm not going to want to use any more of them. Because now I have four in the deck. In fact, let's look at the master deck. You can see we have four. So now that I have four in the deck, I don't want to use any more of them because at this point you pivot to using them just for damage and never for kills so that you don't overfill your deck with them. Uh, you've seen previously, if you've seen anyone like put a bunch of shiv shivs, if you've seen anyone put a bunch of, uh, that was the wrong unit, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. One sec. Yeah, if you've seen anyone put a bunch of stings in their deck and then draw a hand that's only stings and they can't do anything, that's what I'm trying to avoid here. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Regen. Regen. Spring balls. I really just want to thin the deck now and just have spreading spores in my Waken Hollow and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm still on full HP on my Thorned Hollow there, by the way. Okay. Extra energy each turn. Probably not extra energy. Extra card each turn gets us our cycle so we can get faster back to the Spreading Spores as well as our Wildwood Saps that don't consume. Oh, don't you goddamn dare tell me that I can... No, wait. I duped Spreading Spores. Never mind. Okay, so I didn't have another Wildwood Sap that should not have consumed. Good. Uh, yeah, draw an additional card per turn, I think is going to be way better for us, though. Unleash the Wildwood. Restore friendly units to full health. I mean, that's still a heal. But I have so much regen in the deck that really that being a good heal for me means that I've already failed other things. I think I might just skip. I could give eight rage to a target that's regening itself constantly give it some damage. 8 rage is 16 damage. It's pretty impactful. So the things that we're going to have to worry about now are people getting past my Thorn Hollow because it doesn't do much damage unless it's very late game. So effectively, I'm just worried about people running past it. But I have the Horned Warrior oftentimes behind it. That's where my damage comes from. I think I'll pass. Demon friends. I mean, when you have a, a sketch of salvation in the deck, you take demon friends. You just do. Hey, Hef. Hef approaches the train, shivering as a behemoth of fur. It's cold enough to win uh, freeze a wax's wick off in here. I don't know how you stand it. <sighs> Regardless, it seems like the real spike didn't disappoint. Uh, so yeah, just as promised. Accept your reward. Upgrade all copies of automatic rail spikes with plus 10 magic power and consume. Perfect. Forge new spells in my deck, gain an artifact. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Deal one damage to enemy units when they move between floors and 50% chance to apply days when enemy unit went into your train. If we ever set up uh, our... 
If we ever set up our spikes on the bottom floor, Concussive Coals is really bad for us. Jack Strips just kills a couple of enemies, though. Which is nice. Upgrade is melting doubles. Uh, double stack on a regen or on spreading spores. I think it's regen. And then decrease the cost of a spreading spores. Now, magic power, by the way, as have a look. It can't target things with armor, can't target things with spikes. It only works on damage dealt and restored health. That's it. That's why I haven't been using it so far. Let's also get another train steward out of the deck because we're going to want the demon friend summoned. We're so powerful at the moment that I think I can buff my enemy units. Oh, we did get the demon friend on floor two. Beautiful. I think I just thorned hollow and wildwood sap the bottom floor, honestly. Let's also give it 10 armor so it lives through the turn. And I'll spike the frontliner. Get the sentient on the next floor. Uh, sentient in front of the demon warrior there, I think. Cool. Engraft on this floor first. Torch the backliner allows me to survive. I also want a March of Shields. Oh, that's 75 gold. 75 gold is a lot. Do I use a Rail Spike to get 75 gold? Get a second Rail Spike in my deck? No. I, I can't put more Rail Spikes in my deck. That's really, really bad for me. I'm going to allow the Self Mutilation to go off this turn. I'm going to use March of Shields, two Rail Spikes here. Damn, I couldn't take the money there, but I feel like that was still probably the right decision. Okay. Self mutilation out, and. Guess I'll just heal for three on this floor. I need to go to an upgrade unit shop and upgrade some of my big boys already. Okay. Let's go regen. Heal him. Heal him. Torch the backliner. Lose my big boy on floor two. That makes sense. To rail spike the top line of those so that it actually dies. Then I'm going to need to focus on the top four for the next turn. Okay. I don't think I need the extra 15 regen on the bottom line right now, so instead I'm going to double stack that on the top line. Gain. Armor to keep you alive. And then... Yeah. Lose 10 HP, unfortunately. Yeah, we win the bottom floor already. Let's get rid of the self-mutilation.
With that extra two stacks of regen there, now we only take 20 damage instead of dying. Oh, that's so brutal. So what we need now are things that give us buffs towards uh, spikes and regen and uh, the artifacts and the things that will do that. Got him. So I took 13 damage in that fight. Yeah. Probably another end graft. The, the spreading spores is very expensive compared to the ones that I already have in the deck. End graft is free. Okay, Tyson Climb. Ascend a unit and apply days two. That's actually really interesting because I can ascend some of the units that... <gasps> Ooh, but branding right? Piercing. Deal five damage, apply 15 armor. That's really... Mm, Inverno? Sometimes I have an empty floor, but I don't have enough energy to play it. Okay. So Tyson Climb, ascend a unit and apply days two. That'll allow us to overstack floors by ascending our own units or ascend enemy units. We don't want to ascend enemy units and apply days to them because then they won't attack our thorns. I'm honestly looking very closely at that branding right, right now. Just because when I have a unit that has a bunch of regen topped on top of them, but they also have full HP, this gives them the ability to gain 15 armor for two energy. And also, it's flexible. I can use it to kill an enemy if I need to. Let me take it. And because it's piercing, it goes through shields and armor. Woo. Remove two cards from deck as well as an event. Yeah, but there's the artifact. Let's look at the artifact shop first. Regen gains. Yeah, regen resource plus one health per stack as well as wing clippings. I would love wing clippings, but I have to take the bloating fungus. And Priory's Cloak as well. Whenever a friendly unit is healed, deal damage to the front enemy unit equal to the amount healed. I'll take both of those. Cards with Consume have a 50% chance to be discarded instead. Is really, really good with, like, obviously my Pyre Shards, my Wildwood Sap. Um... Actually, that's about it. The Spreading Spores already give themselves propagation. So, yeah, I'm, I'm fine just being able to take these two. I'd love if I could get some thorns now. Revenge, draw one. That's actually really good. We have a lot of... Like, uh, we want a lot of draw because our spreading spores are that great. Yeah, we, we take cultivating. We want the draw. Take the higher HP and move on. Enemies enter with spell shield. I don't really use spells on my enemies, but even if I do need to, I have the piercing one that goes through. And I want the 100 gold so that I can start removing more cards from my deck. So we're not getting Demon Friend out this fight, unfortunately. I want to be able to nuke these frontline units, so I think I actually do regen on my sentient here. Let's use Engraft first. It's branding right to kill the backliner there. Go for regen. It's sweet, so it's actually dealing three damage to my backliner as well. We're probably going to end up losing the Horned Warrior quite quickly here as a result of that, unfortunately. Unless I give the Horned Warrior regen, but that just sounds like a bad idea to me. I need this Thorned Hollow to get more HP as well. Okay. There we go. We got our double stack regen 10. That's, that's Wildwood Sap for the top liner. Just 
control you. Go for consume, consume. On more gold, though. And graph to you quickly. My shards for some more spikes. We'll keep that one alive this turn at least. Should probably march. March the Thorn Hollow. No, but it get, ends up on full HP at the end of that turn anyway. So we'll take six damage to the Master of Light if it gets to the top floor. I'm okay with that. Just always have the regen for the right target at the right time, basically. Also, if I could get anything that's like whenever you apply one stack of, uh, whenever you apply a stack of spikes, get an additional stack of spikes, pretty good. Alright, so like respite. That'll about do it. They don't go to the next floor until the end of the combat, and we win the combat. Cool. I need ways to increase the max HP of my units as well, especially my champion. Because otherwise in the final fight, I'll just lose it instantly. Devour your spells. So devouring my spells is actually fine. We will end up losing like you know all of our pyre shards and stuff like that. But the thing is, the spreading spores can like they go back to my discard pile, so I end up just getting them back. Unfortunately, I did not look at the thing again. I need to remember that I have to do that at the start of each of these episodes because I'm I like I'm so used to not having to go. Okay, what's the final boss before I start my run? Invigorating solution with the extra draw is neat. Probably don't want another branding right. In fact, I've barely even used the first one. Return to consume spell to your hand. Only problem is if that gets summons at the start of a fight. So no, I'm gonna take the, H the money there. The H for money. Duplicate in your deck except your champion as well as an artifact in 20. I'm gonna take that over the random selection of artifacts. Just because I really don't have that much money left. There's no more artifact shops afterwards, though. But I do get an artifact choice on this side. I'm going to take it. Whenever you play your third card of the turn, draw three. Sounds good to me. Got a lot of zero-cost cards in this deck. Speaking of zero-cost cards in this deck. 
Get another spring spores. Okay, thankfully the boss is actually going to empower the alabasters with rage, which makes makes them attack. It's very important they attack here, otherwise I don't, uh, I can't do anything. I don't, I can't do anything. You know, you know when you don't can't do anything. It's like that. There. Okay. Start setting up the sentient, I think. Watch you two. And I got two rail spikes I can throw out. I'm gonna throw them both out on this line. Made no place for either of us. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna lose that bottom floor. I don't. I don't care about that bottom floor here. So. Throw that double stack on the top liner for that one. Uh, at least. Should be trying to spread my spores equally. you down as well. Okay. There's so many artifacts that'd be so good for me that I just don't have. I mean... Bunch of damage the back line is nice. Because you're on this floor and you get armor 10 every time with the incant, so I'm gonna actually start spreading my spells on the top line. Give you a branding deal as well. Good. Extremely well covered floors here. I like having this big boy behind. I think it's important so that I can actually like stay on my own two feet while I'm still setting up my build. Ah, okay. uh, that should have been an end graft first. At least on the top liner for the extra point of uh, spikes. Also, I'm starting to realize I definitely should have put double stack on one of the, <laughs> the spreading spores. Oops. Like, the regen 10 is really good. But still. Still feels like it should have been elsewhere, right? I'm regening 51 on that unit every turn now. That's more than it has in health. So I should definitely start stacking up the next. That'll do. That'll do. Let's see how you do, Bell. 
Nothing. You're dead. That makes sense. <laughs> so you attack me for 24, I heal back up. You attack me for 24, I heal back up. I can do this 44 more times. Sorry, uh, I could do it 40 more times at that point. 40? No, tw uh, 20. 24 more times. There we go. Draw an additional card a turn. I think it's, uh, I think it's pretty clear. Consume, draw X, enhance all cards drawn this way to cost negative one. Best that can really do for me is like make the engrafts cost negative one. I mean, it can make this spreading spore cost zero and then start using that better. I honestly don't think I need any of these again. What I really want is Bramble Lash. I think I'm going over this side. I want the artifact a lot. Demon units gain multi-strike or apply rooted to enemy units. So if you apply rooted to enemy units when they enter the room before lo uh, below the pyre floor, then you can set up on the top floor with a bunch of spikes and they have two turns of attacking you. Super good for that. Demon units gain multi-strike is only really good for our demon friend and uh, uh, haunt warrior. It's not bad, but attacking isn't really our build. I'm gonna go with the root split mask. A spell to remove consume. I my understanding is actually if you upgrade a spell to remove consume, that it won't consume even in the the great trader fight. I'm gonna upgrade invigorating solution to draw three because more draw is just all we really want. Make uh, not engraft cost zero. Actually, still, mana is not a problem for us, really. You know what is a problem for us? These stupid marches of shields. So what's that train steward? If I get that train steward out of the deck, I summon a demon fiend, a horned warrior, and a thorn tollow every single start of every fight. That's a lot better. Hellvent. Hmm. The train stops near some familiar crystals. The Covenant Memorial in the middle is refracted twice. Refracted twice, sorry. Refracted twice by the crystals surrounding it. One larger, one smaller. In front of each, there are markings for a creature to stand and receive the remaining energy. I can make a unit only one capacity size, or I can give it an extra capacity size as also give it extra damage and extra health. I don't put units behind my Thorned Hollow anymore. I tend to put my uh, Sentient in front of the Horned Warrior. Yeah. But also, do I put any units behind my Demon Friend? Not really. I can't afford to, usually. Usually, when Demon Friend spawns, that just tells me, oh, that's the floor that I'm not going to be using in this fight. Is that good enough? It's 15 extra damage, 25 extra health. Yeah, I think the I think the Thorned Hollow needs it exclusively so that it can stand up to a big hit from Fell at the end of the uh, run. Because usually, what's it by base? What, 10, 40, 40 max HP? If Fell attacks for 10, four times, and I think it does, if Fell attacks for 10, four times, then it kills the Thorned Hollow before my regen even gets a chance to trigger. There's a blinding flash and an ear-splitting roar where your ally once stood now stands a behemoth. As you depart, the train lurches under the, the, the uh, train's newfound weight. Spell shield, don't care. I'd love an artifact though. Honestly, these are kind of the flaws as I would want them, TBH. TBQH. Look at that. 
give you a double stack of that and give you some spikes. I need to start spreading spores on the top line as well. Now let's go. Honey bunches of damage right there. Sucks not being able to kill that again. Actually, you know, I have a rail spike. The rail spikes at the very least will consume themselves out of the deck in the final fight. So I think I can actually use one for uh, for killing that here in order to get the extra 100 gold. Yeah, 100 gold's a lot. That's like another removal for me at this point. It's on slay. Yeah, it's not going to get any slays. Use an end graph to make sure the frontliner here dies. Draw three cards. Another end graft. Oh, I mean, I could just use the branding right to kill it, so I don't have to get the autom- Eh, it's branding right. <laughs> so all of those cards that are spells that I was just discarding there, they will be, like, eaten up over the course of the fell fight, and I'll just be cycling my spreading spores. Exactly how I want it. Demon Friend is basically just there to you know, soften units in the start rounds. Let's put some of these on you. Okay. We need to get the top liner much better thorned. We need to get him a lot thornier. not currently actually enough to kill all the targets it needs to kill. Okay, spores, 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 and we're good. Spread those spores. I'm just trying to sacrificing the midline. I, I honestly don't care what happens there. That's why the Inferno was possible, but also we didn't get extra energy, so Inferno was impossible. Oh, give him all the business. I'm gonna speed up the Come back to Ultra here. <laughs> All right. Cursed Vines. That's actually really good for us as well. Lovely. 50% uh, chance to swap the front and back units whenever they enter your train. So that will give me the ability to strike back against the weaker units. I mean, the weaker units are already hitting my thorns. 
Maybe I take the money. Okay. Bramble Lash. Deal damage to the front enemy unit equal to five times the amount of spikes on uh, friendly units. Great. And then Battering Ram. Reinforce spec. No, don't want any of those. So glad to have found Bramble Lash. I would love to dupe it. No, no option to dupe here. There's remove two cards from the deck. Yeah, forge your spells. If I forge a spell, what do I want to forge? Like, double stack on a spreading spore would be nice, I guess. That's about it. On this side, there's another artifact. Fine. Going for the money. The artifact gives us enemies gain negative one attack. I don't think there are any enemies that only have one attack in this final area, so I think that's fine. The Pyre starts each combat with eight. Oof. I'm taking Winged Indulgence there. Hopefully it doesn't kill me. I don't think it will, but at least, yeah, maybe. Create a unit with Multi-Strike. Or 15 extra HP. I think I go 15 extra HP on the Thorned Hollow and then Multi-Strike on Horned Warrior. And then... We remove from the deck the cards that we don't want to cycle back into, like the March of Shields. Fine, upgrade a unit to cost negative one. I mean, I'll save the money because it will be summoned at the start of the next combat. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that one. So cultivating two will just increase its HP to 90, which is huge. That's huge. That's huge. It's ridiculous. It'll just stand in the front line and never die if I put enough regen on it. We win. All spell cards get consumed. That's fine. Mm. Actually, am I going top floor with the sentient here? You've got 70. Yeah, I can go top floor with the sentient, actually. Yeah, that that didn't consume. Knew it. Not Bramble Ash. Let's burn out two torches here. And then another torch and an automatic rail spike. I'm just consuming all of those cards. Thinning down my deck. Sucks to lose the end graphs, but whatever. I'm gonna just get the restores out of here as well, I think. The big problem we have is foes on the top floor. They're there for two turns and they take 40 damage to the Horned Warrior each time, but the Sentient's not doing anything yet. I still think I want to set up on this one though. So I still think this setup is correct. I'm just not happy with it. <laughs> if that makes any kind of no sense whatsoever. Make sure the rail spikes don't slay there so I don't soften them back into the deck. All I want is my bramble lashes. Also, by the way, when the deck is only bramble lashes, well, only bramble lashes, only spreading spores, it's gonna be real hard to draw that bramble lash. Just gonna hope I get it on the right turn, kinda. Good turn right there. Big boy. Big boy. Big boy. 
It is officially big boy season. And the reason for the season? That big boy right there. Whew. Now I should probably start sparing a couple of these for the top floor. I obviously don't have to throw all of them there forever, but one turn worth of them will help me prevent anyone from getting to the pile. I honestly think I've already won this. The only way I think I can lose this is if I don't buff the top floor at all. If I had Permafrost upgraded on Bramble Lash, that would be really good as well. Even if I draw Bramble Lash this turn, it's not good though, because. Oh, never mind. Oh my god. You are actually kidding me, right? Yeah, here's the actually kidding me, right? We take 27 damage against the final boss. Oh my god. <laughs> Only because we didn't get back to the regen turn. Hell yeah! And that's another Covenant one. The uh, the harder mode. Hardest mode that's currently in the game right now. <clears throat> Just saying. That's another Covenant one victory for us on the Awoken. Actually, another Covenant one victory. And it's on the Awoken. There we go. We've upgraded the Sentient as well as 10 more cards. Getting their golden frames, as well as unlocked edge prior. Healing spells on this floor co uh, cost a negative one. And transcend him. Repeat all summon effects triggered so far this battle. That's really, really good in a heavy deck. Well, I'm going to pop up the rum summary and say that uh, for the moment, my name's from Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Monster Train. For watching the whole way through, I'm going to tell you... Um... I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you you should probably check the comments if you wanna if you if you wanna get access to this game before April 9th, before the public beta period ends. Maybe uh maybe maybe, maybe check the comments. Maybe check the pin comment down there. I don't, know, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe maybe it'll be helpful to you. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.